In this short video, I'd like to introduce one way of understanding the so-called put core of parity, which is based on an object-free argument. The put core parity says the price difference between a core and a put with the same strike and time to maturity equals the difference between the underlying asset and the discounted strike at any given time. For convenience, we are going to assume the risk-free rate is zero and the discount factor is just one. So we have one thing to worry about first. To derive this parity equation, let's construct a portfolio. In this portfolio, we are going to allow a core option. So you buy a core with price C. Then we are going to short or write a put option with price P. By holding these two positions, you expect to make money when the underlying asset's price increases, which would make the core more valuable and render the put worthless. But you would also lose a lot of money when the underlying asset's price drops, since the core would become less valuable, while the put that you short will become more expensive. To hedge these positions, we are going to short one unit of underlying asset. Write down the value of this portfolio. We are along C, short P, and short S. At time zero, when we enter, the dollar value is as follows. And at a maturity, we have CT minus PT minus ST. Note at a maturity, if we know the underlying asset price, we know what the core or the put is worth, which is just the payoff. When ST is higher than the strike K, the cost payoff is ST minus K, where put is worthless. When ST is lower than the strike K, the core is worthless, while the cost payoff is K minus ST. Plug this in the portfolio value formula. We see the underlying assets price cancels out. So no matter what the underlying asset price is, the value of the portfolio is fixed at a maturity, which is minus k, without any uncertainty. So no matter what happens, we know at maturity how much this portfolio is worth. Because of that, the initial value of the portfolio needs to be the same as well, otherwise we are offered a golden arbitrage opportunity. Imagine the initial call price was lower relatively to this parity we just figured out. So you spent less money buying that call. Or the put was initially more expensive, so you sold the put at a higher price. In this way, you are guaranteed to make money. That is what this golden upcharge opportunity means. It helps if we look at a, a more specific example, which I made up. Let's say a stock's price is $102. We're going to set strike at $100, $2 lower than the stock. The cost price will be worth a little bit more than the difference. Let's say it's $3. And we set the put price to be $2 because of the probability of stock's price dropping in the future. In this example, the price difference between the call and the put is $1. $1 less than the difference between the stock and the strike. In this case, according to the parity we discovered earlier, it means you bought the call at $1 cheaper, or equivalently, you sold the put at $1 higher, so you should be guaranteed to make $1 with the portfolio we constructed earlier. To plug all the numbers into the portfolio value formula, at time zero, the portfolio is worth minus $101. Equivalently, you sell something for $101. At time maturity, the portfolio has a fixed value regardless of what the underlying price is which is minus K, or equivalently, you only need to return $100 to your broker. You made $1 even if the world has gone crazy before your options expire.
the ultimate above requires no model because it's based on the payoff of the options at maturity. We can take a look at the portfolio we constructed with the Black Shores model and try to get a slightly deeper understanding. We are going to focus on the Greek delta. Recall delta is the first order derivative of the option with respect to the underlying asset price. For a call, it's ND1. For a put, it's ND1 minus 1. Since we are long a call and short a put, the delta of the combination of these two options is just 1, a constant. Now recall how to construct a delta hedge portfolio. When we long a derivative with delta, we will need to short delta unit of the underlying. In this case, since delta is 1, we will need to short one unit of the underlying. Now we see the portfolio we constructed at the right beginning, in fact, is a delta hedged portfolio. Since delta is always 1, a constant, it means this portfolio will always be delta neutral, so its value is constant too. Working backward like what we did before, we are left with the put call parity. Note we assume discount factor to be 1 earlier. If it's not, then we just need to discount the final value of the portfolio to a given time for the, par for the parity to hold. Finally, to visualize the constant delta of long a call and short a put, let's plot delta as a function of the underlying price. We call delta of a call as a H shape between 0 and 1, and close to 0.5 at the money. How close depends on the risk-free rate and dividend. While delta of a put has the same shape, but between minus 1 and 0, and close to minus 0.5 at the money. The difference between the two curves at any given S is always 1. You may also recall gamma, which is the derivative of delta with respect to the underlying price. It's the same for the core and the put with the, with the same parameters, since the shapes of the two curves are exactly the same. So the gamma for C minus P is 0 here. Put call parity is one of the most basic and also one of the most important concepts in derivative finance. Hopefully you find this video helpful and hope to see you again next time.